let's make some cliffs. So I'm going to use the create polygon tool for this one. So that will be under mesh tools, create polygon. And um, how this one works is let's switch the top view, make it a bit easier. So I'm going to tap the spacebar, hover over the top panel, tap the spacebar again. And how this tool works is you just click on the viewport and um, it'll lay down points. And then when you're done, just press enter and that'll complete your, um, your mesh. So right now, I actually like the shape that I just drew. Um, you can see that it's black. So whenever you draw in a clockwise um, direction, the normals will be kind of uh, facing downward. So if I go back to the perspective view, you can see it over here. If I were to draw counterclockwise, it would actually be facing up. So what I need to do now is just reverse this. I'm gonna select my mesh and I'm gonna go to um, mesh display and reverse. There we go. So I have this piece of irregular mesh and now I'm going to extrude it. So I'm going to select it and there's an extrude option over here. We can click this and I'm just going to bring this up maybe to about right here. So make the cliff a little bit tall. Right. Next, what I would like to do is, by the way, I'm um, going into the component modes by holding down the right mouse button, choosing object mode. And then um, what I would like to do now is create a cliff that has some nice uh, vertical rock forms. So like some um, basically shapes that are more running vertical. So we're going to grab the multi-cut tool, which you can get from here or down here. And we're going to slice across this mesh. So as long as you're starting from outside the mesh and clicking and dragging, right, um, you can slice right through the mesh. And I'm going to basically create some um, vertical edges that aren't exactly straight. Oops. So you can see it stopped over here because I let go. I'm just going to do that. And I'm going to go all the way through. And maybe one more right here is good. All right. So I think that's probably good for me. Maybe one more over here. And then next, what I would like to do is add a few edges running horizontally as well. So I'm going to click and drag. One over here. And maybe one over here as well. So I have something like this. So, um, now we want to displace some of these vertices. So let's uh, press Q to go to our select tool. We'll go into object mode again and we'll select our object. And um, what we want to do is displace the vertices, but not all of them. I'd like to keep the top a little bit flat and the bottom I'd like to keep flat as well, right? Um, for a mesh like this, I would like to have it sit on, say, a ground plane. And I don't know how flat that ground plane will be, right? So I want to keep that pretty flat. All right, so I'm going to go into vertex mode. And I want to grab all the vertices along the middle. So let's just go into maybe the front or the side panel, make things a little bit easier. And I'm going to press four on the keyboard so that I can see through it. And this just enables wireframe mode. And then we can just grab these vertices over here. All right, let's go back. And now let's um, transform some of these vertices. So go up to edit mesh. Down here, we have this transform tool or option. And um, we can open up that option box. I'm just going to reset this. And the random value is basically the strength at which it will randomize these vertices. So I found I find a value somewhere between 0.6 and 0.8 works pretty well for um, me in this um, for this cliff, right? So I'm gonna go with maybe like somewhere 0.65 is fine. And I'm gonna click transform vertex. Actually, no, I'll leave this window open. I'm gonna click apply. And so nothing's happened yet, but if we click and hold and drag the blue arrow, you can see that this pulls it out. So now we have, um, we're starting to see some of this rocky form. What I'm gonna do is just pull it out a little bit. And if I hit G, I can repeat that action, or you can hit apply here, but I'm just gonna press G. And that'll randomize it again so that it pulls it a little bit differently. So I'm just gonna pull this out. This out. All right, so now it's starting to look a little bit um, irregular. And I'm just gonna close this up. And then I want to grab the bottom vertices. And this one's going to be a little bit different. So I just have the bottom ones there selected. And what I'm going to do with these ones is I want to pull it out, but I don't want to pull it out in all directions. I, I just want to pull it out um, away from um, that edge. So I'm going to go up to Edit Mesh again, Transform. This time I'm just going to click it because I know the values is fine for me. And I don't want to pull this blue arrow right now because it's going to pull it down and those ones will be um, going downwards, right? I'm just going to undo that. What I'm going to do is click this little blue ball and that's going to switch it to like a world orientation. And then I can click this box or any of these boxes 
and that'll give me my middle um, uh, uniform scale. And that way, when I click and drag this out, it's going to scale outwards without pulling down those middle vertices at the bottom. Eventually, we'll probably just delete those faces anyways, but for now, I just want to show you this. All right, so I'm gonna bring this out a little bit, and I think right here is probably good for me. All right, so now let's um, make this low poly. So we'll go into object mode, press Q to go to your select tool, we'll select our object, and what we wanna do is first maybe uh, f freeze these transformations if we transformed it, um, and I think, it's fine, we might have froze it at a certain point already because I see it's frozen. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to delete that history and now I'm gonna select the mesh and rather than just triangulating this and reducing it to triangles, I want to remesh it first because if we reduce it with the current triangle count it has, it's going to basically put triangles in these sections. I want it to be a little more random. So I'm gonna select the mesh, go to uh, mesh, and I'm gonna remesh it. And um, I mean, let me undo that. Just I want to show you. I'm going to open up that option box. I have these at the default value. So I'll just show you and remesh. And then I want to reduce the max edge length. So I'm going to make this maybe 0.4 or 0.5. I'll try 0 0.5. 0 0.5 works. I probably could have gone like maybe 0 0.7, right? So that works as well. And then uh, now we'll select our mesh. We will um, delete that history. And I want to reduce this. So. Let's go um, to Mesh Display. We'll harden these edges first. There we go. And then uh, let's go to Mesh and we'll reduce. And all we need to do now is drag the slider down and then stop once we get close to the form we want. We don't want to go too far because we're going to include another step in a second, right? But I'm going to go to about maybe right here, right? And I think that looks already pretty good. So what I would like to do next is I would like to bring back uh, some of the quads. So right now it's all triangles. And for some of these rocky forms, it looks really good if we include some um, quads, even n-gons in some cases, but for us, just some quads. So I'm gonna select this mesh and I'm going to delete that history and we're going to quadrangulate it. So go to your mesh tab and we're gonna to go to quadrangulate. We're gonna open up this option box. Now I'm gonna reset this. Because we hard, harden these edges, we're gonna need to turn off keep hard edges. And the angle threshold is if you want more quads, you would drag that slider up. And if you want less quads, you would um, drag that down. So what we wanna do is uh, click apply and notice that right now it's all triangles. And also notice that um, the face count is 396. If, if you don't have this display, it's under display, heads up display and uh, poly count right here. So what I'm gonna do is have the mesh selected and I'm gonna click apply and notice that my uh, face count has been reduced, meaning I have uh, more quads now. All right, and let's take a look at it. We'll turn off wireframe unshaded and you can see it looks a little bit different now and it looks really nice. We have uh, these nice strong vertical lines, which was what I was going for. And we have some interesting um, movement in some of those shapes going in and out. So I think that looks really good. I'm just gonna close this up. And if we want, we could reduce it more, go through that process, but I think this looks pretty good. And what I'm gonna do is just give it a color. So I'm gonna select the mesh, hold down the right mouse button, choose assign new material, and I'm gonna give it a Lambert. And then over here, I'm just going to just delete the history so I can get to the Lambert easier. And I'm gonna go change this color. And I found a value earlier that worked for me, so I'm gonna go 21, 0.6 and 0.6. And there you go, we have a nice um, low poly cliff. And the nice thing about this cliff is it has a lot of reusability and it can be quite modular. So I'm gonna make a duplicate of this. Just pull off a copy over here. By the way, just press Control D to make a duplicate. And I'm gonna scale this up. Maybe move this one over here a little bit. Make another copy. Um, Control D again. And this one I'll maybe scale up a little bit as well. So you can see in a very short amount of time, we're able to create a really, you know, nice looking cliff that has um, a nice um, rock form to it. So there we go. I can turn on um, ambient occlusion so you can see it a bit better. And there you go. There is our um, low poly cliff. All right, and before we close out today, I just want to mention a couple more things. So I made a cliff that potentially would sit, you know, on a ground plane of some sort. But to make it a little more efficient, what I would do is I would go in 
and remove the faces on the bottom. But if you're making rock forms that you know, you're placing up here and it potentially could be uh, viewed at any angle, then I would leave that geometry there. Um, and then finally, I made a cliff that has a flat top section, but cliffs come in a variety of forms. So you could have easily uh, started off with a different shape if you like, or displaced some of the vertices at the top early on in the process. But uh, that's something that I'll leave up to you. All right, that concludes today's tutorial. And now you're on your way to making some great low poly cliffs. That's it for this one. We'll see you in the next. This has been Digital Dreambox, your destination for game art.